Hello everyone, welcome to the Architecting a Closed Loop Intent Based Controller session towards autonomous networks. My name is Ariel Liguori. I'm a network architect engineer with background in telcos and enterprises, currently working as VP of Software Defined Networking at GP Morgan Chase. For today's agenda, we will start with a quick level set on what those terms mean, specifically closed loop, intent, and controller then trying to understand the problem statement and the target state we want to reach. And finally, design consideration and architecture considerations if we try to build a solution towards those goals, right? At the very end, we will also understand how lifecycle and AI ops fits within this model. So if we talk about closed loop, we have to understand there are many kinds of different systems. We have open loop systems as well. Um, and something interesting to think here, right, and specifically for us, network engineers, architects, if we try to fit these systems control engineering back into our models, how this works, right? In an open loop, the output, it is free from their input, right? But in a closed loop system, whenever you do a process to actually to reach that output, it will be something that will take the values from it and it will reject a feedback into the input to actually modify that output or maybe to make it stable. If you have some electrical or electronical engineering background here, you will remember control systems. So this is pretty much the same. But the important piece for us to understand here is is this really the open loop different from the closed loop that we have in network systems, right? What if we argue, and I have here this, right? We have, we have just our manual stuff, right? We are just doing a bunch of CLI, API, doing stuff, and then we are seeing the outcome. And based on that, maybe we should shift, right? And I remember this from my back old engineering days when I was just starting, right? I type a command, right? And if the output was not correct, I was my own feedback loop, right? I say, hey, this is not good. Or even if it was a worst case, right? And I, I didn't even notice. Someone will call me as a feedback and say me, hey, you broke something. Go and change your input so we can get, get the desired output again. So the important thing here is this is not the same, right? So the system itself is managing and overlooking this. So whenever you do some input and we will discuss what that input will be, a controller will take care of distribution of those changes towards the network and the output, probably some SLAs, right? It will be measured. And if something happens, a feedback and a control link, right? Going back from the output to the input will be injected to say, hey, correct this. But all of this important piece here, it is real time. Then we talk about another super field concept, which is intent. Intent or intention, I believe I remember someone say that the intent is the intention or the intended state. So pretty much it's a recursive or a recursion on, on their on their meaning, right? But the important piece for us is that the intent will represent the desired state, right? What we want to reach. And, and something that I always told us, this should be expressed in terms of the end user, right? The end user, it might be different, but if we are talking about user-facing, customer-facing systems, we should express the intent in a way that it's understandable for us and for them at the same time, right? So that actually implies that you either have a mapping between user terms and network constructs that can be super complex. And that's why I always talk about different layer of intent, but let's start saying that from an end user customer perspective, it could be, hey, I want to have a connection from my branch office A to the DCB with that many max or gigs with this latency assure, right? And my traffic profile, or it's going to be X or Y for this kind of traffic, right? Pretty much they are going to play some logic. They are going to interface and maybe 
if we are just one step beyond, right? We want to end user to say, hey, I want to have network connectivity platinum within those two. Uh, we will have a map, a table mapping that platinum to, hey, your delay is going to be less than two milliseconds. Um, you are not going to have that many shitter and we are going to provide you not just best effort QoS, right? And then if they just want to simply say, hey, you know what? I know that this branch office now is very critical for me. I just want to change this to be, I don't know, maybe titanium, gold, any other flavor, right? So they should simply will say that, hey, just move me back from this one to the new one. And the important piece here is it's all about the point of view of the customer. Then, and I already told this, this desired state from their point of view, it might be very, very different on the system that we have in the middle. And we will discuss about this in the problem statement piece. But you can think of that the intent from the end user, it might be get translated into intent for our network, right? Because platinum now means, hey, you have to take care of the latency and the shader, right? So maybe we do have another intent converted from that one, right? Like a translation from end user lingo to network system lingo. Controller, finally, we, we all talk about controllers, uh, specifically when we start with SDN, uh, and you all know that all the vendor has those software controllers that pretty much are overlooking all your network, right? And they are pushing the information back to the endpoints. So the controller is the one that is in charge to actually to take that input from the end user slash network admin or security admin, system admin, whatever, and pushing it back to the system, right? All the different endpoints. And the endpoints, they do have a control plane connection back to this fold, which is the channel on which they receive the commands, right? So when you talk about a controller, you actually can think about it, hey, this is the brain. And then we will discuss if this is actually a distributed brain, right? Because we don't want to have single one, right? The human being has one, but if you are in your network, you don't want to have a single point of failure, right? So that's why they are distributed evenly. And some of them, they actually think this one is like the manipulator, right? It will enforce how you will flow your packets. Yeah, that might not be entirely true. It really depends on the vendor implementation, right? You might want to have some kind of autonomy in your endpoint to do something if your controller is not there. And then we can see how we reconcile when he's back at home, right? We will discuss about that as well. So after that quick level set, we also have arise some of the problems that we might hit if we are going toward this path, which I will remember in this case for us is actually to build a system that will take an intent and it will use a closed loop to actually enforce it across the entire system. And I'm using system here because it might be a network, it might be an optical network, it might be a cloud admin, right? A cloud BI infrastructure. So there are multiple ecosystems. That's one of the first issues that we have, right? If we want to enforce this intent to go really beyond, not just the network, right? And I want to expose my end user, hey, you know what? I want my application to perform this way when it's connecting back to this other application, which happens to be in a different AC, right? And when we talk about these pieces and we try to fit on the items that we just discussed, this will be, hey, first of all, you are talking about applications. So I need my mapping here, right? Where is this in the, in the network itself? So then you told me region. So that means that I might have multiple different layers of networks to connect one region with the other, right? And that means different domains, right? What if I just have optical connections back within them? So it's completely different system. And of course, different interfaces to support. One of the common problems here is, hey, do you have an, a network that is just single vendor across all the different domains, like the BI, the network, and the optical piece? I don't think so. 
So and actually, in some cases, right, pretty much the last piece, which is closer to the end user, it might be legacy system. So how do you push the intent towards that legacy system, right? And that's when I tell that the intent get lost into the chain, right? Because you have a, a touch point where you cannot see what's happening there. Then we talk about measurement, right? So what should I measure? So if I'm exposing, so, and this is, I believe this is like the bare minimum, if I'm exposing a feature that it has in terms of SLA, latency, Sheeter, QoS, right? Packets Assure, something like that. The minimum piece that I do have to monitor, it's the features that I'm exposing back to my end user. And the answer to that is pretty simple because I do have to ensure that I am always in agreement with my contract, right? And finally, if those are multiple system, it is probably be more than one, just single control loop, right? Looking over all this system, right? So you have to integrate different closed loop, pretty much uh, they are going to be, or probably they are going to be one per domain that you have, but you have to have the ability to actually to spin up to all of them, read the, their feedbacks, right? And take the corrections. And the tricky part here, which is doesn't seem to be that when you just discuss this, is right that one single correct correction from one control loop, it will also do a cascade effect with all the other domains, right? So the federations about these closed loops and how they interface together, it will be crucial. I'm not saying that the control loop itself, they have to talk each other, that's not needed, but the upper systems, right? They will have a way to actually to expose and say something back and say, hey, you know what? This got changed here, so it might impact you. So the, the problem here is that all the domains are not perfectly decoupled one each other. And then the funny piece, right? The, the, what we actually want to reach. So intent driven, end to end, we push an intent and we just cross our arms and we are sure that it's pushed back to the whole network. So we can actually consume this in a declarative way. If you talk uh, with a DevOps guy, he will say, hey, I will use my infrastructure as code to actually to deploy maybe the system. And then you can talk with some system folk and say, hey, yes, I will use my QB syntax and I will just use some operators to define how do I want the network. That would be pretty cool actually. And that will just interface with you. So this is also about, this is all about how you want to be consumed from the end user point of view, right? And of course, if we're just in the target state, I don't want the connection within all these different layers to be just ad hoc or vendor proprietary and I have to do the gluing. So it should be standards within the communications. And there are many pieces here that needs to communicate. So we talk about controller to controller in a federation environment, right? Controller to network devices, which is the SBI. There's a lot of work being done on that in the past. So that's pretty solid. Then the telemetry piece, right? How it will pull, how it will reinject into the controller, will reuse the same input as the end user. So standards are the key to make this target state something possible, right? If not, you are going to get mess with different vendor integrations. And finally, which is our dreamland, right? the autonomy of the network itself. It is autonomous. It is just receiving the intent from whatever user it is, right? And it's having the control loops and the re reinforcement feedback links that will do the remediation and the healing if needed. So we will cover a little bit on this on the life cycle and AI ops later today. Some design considerations, right? We have told that you have to be standards driven. So if you have standards, go and use it. So we have to remember that the intent is the key driving this. So reinforcement of the intent, it will be key. So whatever you are using telemetry and events, it needs to be to actually to measure that intent, right? And 
it needs to reinforce the input to actually to always accomplish that intent. So something pretty silly, but still useful for someone's right. You're architecting a solution. You don't want a single point of failure. You want to always reduce your blast radius and no hubs puff. So in short, this will be in a federated domain, you will have multiple controllers, pretty much one per domain, and they will have to talk all each other, right? Here again, standards are key. You will have to need you will need a plan and analysis stage. This is pretty interesting, right? What if I'm injecting an intent that will change completely what I already have? So you have to be sure that the things that you're injecting in the network will not break anything else. And this is the complex piece as well. Something that we, we didn't discuss before in either of the topics, right, is, hey, I, I want to actually to push in 10 and I want to have these fancy systems. So what do I need to pack all this data, right? And there's a bunch of data here, don't get me wrong. You have to, first of all, get the intent from the end user and possible intents from the different layers slash domains, because we already discussed that intent might be based on the point of view of which one is consuming it. You will need an inventory of all the network stuff that you have to touch, even if it's optical, end user facing, whatever, right? Because if not, how do you know what is on that region? So the inventory is key. Something which is not trivial is we are talking a lot about telemetry. So telemetry will be just local collecting all the inputs close to the source, sending back to a super huge repo, right? Which one? Which metrics do you want to store? And I already have a point of view on this, right? So at least the bare minimum that you want is the one that are actually reflecting, reflected on your intent. And then the policy, right? All the business rules that you want to enforce, they need to be stored as well. I don't want them to be hard coded in, in, in the architecture or controller code, right? You want them, someone to be able to modify those policies. So that's something that you need to consider as well. Then the assurance piece, which is pretty much the telemetry, right? And here again, you can track performance, you can track just events, but the important piece is why you need to track, right? So intent compliance slash fulfillment of the contract, that's the first one. And then you want to track because you will use this as the feedback, right? Your feedback link, the one that is going to be used for the self-healing, it is going to be based on this information and more to come here on AI ops, right? Then where to send and the, let's say the architecture on how are you going to consume this? It's going to be really important, right? Do you want to just have a published subscriber model or just an observer and the controller slash other piece of your architecture is always overlooking at this. This cannot scale as well. So publish subscribe, it's really a good option, but it will depend on which events you want to hear and which performance metrics you always have to watch, right? It will be a mix of both. The plan stage, and this is the important piece that I told you, okay, we, we already have our network working. It is fulfilling with all the intents that the end user were asking for. And then a new one came, right? What should I do? This is pretty much the what if analysis, right? I get this new intent, I will analyze it, Consider this analysis piece like a compiler. Syntactical first, okay, this seems good. Semantical, yeah, it is trying to do something good. But then I will have to run a validation across this, right? I will disaggregate the intent in all the different sub intents for the domains. And I will do my correlation piece, which is pretty much validate how it will impact all the different domains, right? And this is the what if piece. And then based on the output of that, I will look at my service slash business rules to see if there is a match of there's a violation of any of the previous intent that I have, like regression testing and of the current one, right? Finally, if it's all green, just execute, right? Something interesting here is that while you are doing this analysis, 
you have the feedback link always running, right? So if you are doing the what if, but guess what? Something just get broke. So the feedback is injecting a new stuff. So your plan, it might not be accurate again. So you have to redo it. This is becoming complex, I know, but it is how it should be. The execution layer, this I believe is, is the simpler one. We already have discussed this on other sessions, other years, right? So, but since you have multiple domains and lingos, you will have someone that have to translate back to the domain that you want to use. This is applicable also to legacy system where you have to build your own API to support this. And once they are on the common way that they can consume it, you will just use your intent way to, to configure them, right? Which is going to be, as usual, I, I told you, right? Any day execution, right? Idempotent based on reconciler. And you, so you are sure that you can push and use this execution layer, layer as many ways that you want, right? On the life cycle piece, and this is the interesting one, right? So I do have my network running, right? I have my feedback and reinforcement link working. So is this enough for autonomy on the network? It is really autonomous itself. What happens when something gets broke, right? Because at the very end, there are physical devices. I still have a router there. I still have a server, probably not a router anymore, right? So, but servers, you know, memory just got fail, the hard disk as well, maybe the whole stuff, maybe the rack fail, right? What should I do? What's going to happen here, right? So of course there's going to be, uh, based on the impact, right? A, a big feedback reinforcement into the input to the controller to say, hey, take this measurement and do something because something gets wrong. But that might be, hey, I will reroute traffic. I will reassign resources. But at the very end, someone will have to take care about this failed server, right? And here's when I, I start wondering myself, right? Who managed who, right? The end system is going to go and tell you, you know what, you have to go there and change that server because it just get broke. Uh, and that's the interesting piece, right? the life cycle, it's going to rely on us to do the manual stuff, which I believe it should be the cheaper one, but we, we cannot forget about that little piece. And then the last piece that I want to cover for us is AI ops, right? We already know all these ops stuff that we have, right? SRE, DevOps, GitOps, simple ops, right? network ops, the one that we have, right? Essentially what we do in the ops layer side and when I when I wear my ops hat, right? I just do some stuff to change the network. But this is not applicable anymore here, right? So if you want to do some change, the change should be against the input layer that we have because I have to still follow the rules. The system will have to mandate and see if I can actually push this change because it will not break anything else. And the AI ops is not different than that. The point important here is that maybe your feedback layer, the one that you're using, it is coming from a vendor. It is just written by you, but you want to expose the ability for others to show your effort. So you want to have the ability to all these triggerings that the, the telemetry piece slash assurance piece is sending back to the input has feedback links. Someone can go and take a look at them and do their own AI, right? And once they have all that data, maybe they are subscribed to the same subscribe publisher events, right? Or they're observing the whole performance data. But if they found something, they have the ability to actually to code to reinject into the input layer. So, Today, or in this case, we are manually providing the feedback. Of course, it's not going to be manual. I, I, I cannot believe that one people is going to overlook all these DB data and say, hey, yeah, the change is here. You have to do this, right? But the important piece is that you always have to follow the rules. You will input by the common layer and that will still do the plan stage. And finally, if it's all green and fits the business, it will do 
the execution layer, right? Something to consider here is what if I do have an emergency change to push, right? Like this get broke. I, I need to go and change something back in this VNF. So do you do you believe that that's something needed? If that's the case, you probably want to support the forceful option on your execution layer, which is pretty much like the direct management. You know what system? I don't care. You have to push this change, right? And then we will see, of course, right? Then the feedback will continue to analyze, but you are injecting in some of the middle layers an execution or a different intent, and you are marking them as force, force true, right? So that might be the case. I know cases where that this might be useful, but probably this is because there is not a fully support of all the domain capabilities within the intent, right? And we can discuss further on this. That's all for our session. If you have any question, you can just drop it. I will do my best to answer you live or else you already have my contact details. Feel free to reach me. This was a really interesting talk for me and I am all the days working toward this topic. So I'm eager to hear your questions. Thank you so much.